So we talked about uh, configuration items, what they are, and that we need to identify them. Then we need to establish baselines and trace changes of these configuration items through their life cycle. Well, one thing we're talking about now is problem reporting, change control, and change review. If you look at basic problem recording, reporting, it means that during the verification stage, you identify that there is problems, and when there are problems, you need to write a problem report when these problems are identified. And in a problem report, you identify and record the problem, but also the resolution to that problem. In other words, how are you going to solve it? And problems may be uh, anomalous behavior of software, non-compliance with software plans and standards, for example. Yeah. So if you have problem reports like that, then you need to track these throughout the life cycle. So that's what's meant by tracking problem reports through the life cycle. So you can establish if these are have been implemented and approved and can be closed. Yeah. Of course, you know when there is a problem has a problem has been detected, you need to invoke change control. So okay, so if you look at problem reporting, uh, you need to come up with some kind of uh, problem reporting classification approach. You know, a couple of them are, you know, you need to also define software error failures and faults. And of course, we already saw that D178C has a couple of definitions regarding failures as being that a system assistant component can no longer perform its um, intended function. Uh, errors means that a software that there, you know, that there is a mistake in the requirements, design, or code, and fault means that a particular error that's present in the software, or in its requirements, design, or the code, manifests itself. Yeah. So, what you can do is you can, for your problem reporting, you can classify various types of problem reports, and one classification uh, is given here. It consists of four types. Type 0, a problem report that has a safety impact. You know, type 1, which means there's two. Type 1A, which has a significant functional failure or a non-significant functional failure. Type 2 would be non-functional fault. Type 3, um, problem report would be, type 3A would be there's a significant deviation from the plans or the standards. Type B would also be minor, would be a non-significant deviation. And type 4 with all the other problems. And this is, of course, based on um, an, an EASA document on software aspects of certification. It's a memorandum. And I have this available on Blackboard. Okay, so, you know, besides defining, of course, errors, failures, and a set of types based on these definitions, you need to define a priority scheme. You know, say, okay, this needs to be fixed immediately. Does it need to be fixed prior to flight or prior to certification? Or do we need to cancel this? Of course, you need to coordinate problem reports. Are you going to implement them? You know, it's going to, the resolutions that are described in the problem report, are you going to go implement those? You're going to cancel them. They may no longer be necessary. It may no longer be a problem. And then you can, of course, close out the problem, report, problem reports. Well, you need to coordinate what I call flow down problem reports. Which means, okay, suppose, for example, you have a higher level requirement problem report, like at the ACRA, the system level, and this may have consequences for software requirements, design and implementation. So if there's a problem identified at some system level requirement, it may flow down, the problem report of these system requirements may flow down to a problem report on the software requirements. Same thing with flow up problem reports. Now you may identify some, some software requirement problems that may have consequences for the, for, the, for the system requirements, for some higher level requirements. These are things you need to come up with some coordinate, coordination strategy and you have to worry about that. Okay, in this particular slide we have, okay, what are some of these, these, these um, you know, configuration management records? Things like a change request, if you want to have a change, change log, you know, you know, you have to, after you have to done the change, you need to record, okay, what has been changed, what has been done, you know, test results, okay, what 
you know, what are some of the outcomes of the test? Problem reports, as I said, you know, maybe some problem identified and the problem report describes the resolution to it and expect this. And so the next two slides, I just gave some basic layout of some of these, some of these documents. Okay, so again, let's go back to the previous one we had. We saw there was this change control mechanism going from the baseline, verification of the baseline, identification of some problems that require changes that need to be authorized. You know, notice you have to perform all these coordination activities that I just talked about over here need to be performed, you know. And then of course you need to implement a change and verify it, you know, in order you need to evaluate that the problems that you have identified, the changes that you have identified or implemented are correctly implemented. And of course then eventually some some like some more, some board or some set of people must approve these changes and update the baseline. So typically, if you look at change review, the objective is um, that you try to ensure that problems and changes are assessed, approved, that the approved changes are implemented, and feedback is provided through problem reporting and change control methods. Okay. So the change control board would be one of these organizations or one of these groups within your organization that uh, kind of like manages this, this change review process. Okay, so uh, again, go back on some of the basic uh, configuration management activities. Archival retrieval and release is one of those. So, you know, what you try to make sure is that the software product can be retrieved in case the software product needs to be duplicated, regenerated, retested, or modified. So, you want to be able to, I can archive the software, but also retrieve it. And of course, when you're all done, you need to be able to release it. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you can somehow guarantee the integrity of this, the, the stored data. Yeah. Make sure that the, nobody can change unauthorized changes and that all the changes go to the standard change review process. You want to make sure that the, the stored data, that there's no deterioration due to the storage medium, or that's minimum. And of course, that there's duplicate copies, there's backups. Well, also, as part of the changes, you know, there's a variety of tools out there that you can use. And these are a couple of them, and of course, they're way more extensive and way more sophisticated tools than these um, available as well. But you know, there are tools out there that can help you significantly in the configuration management process that you really should be considering. Okay, software load control is also an activity of the, the configuration management process where you say if I take you know, my exec executable object code with instructions and data and I take it from the archive, I need to kind of describe and, and, and guarantee um, that this process is performed good. Yeah? So I need to put safeguards in place that this process is done um, carefully 